let's talk about UFW and why it's so important to use and why you should start using it today or at least understanding how to interact with it. So UFW is actually a pre-installed firewall. So you might be asking, why in the world do we need to talk about something that's already installed on a lot of Linux systems? Well, that's because even though it's installed by default, it is disabled. So it's a great tool to help you stay safe on networks, especially on public networks where your computer can be seen and exposed to malicious devices that try gaining access to your system. With that being said, do not enable this on a system that is fully remote without configuration or else you may not be able to access that system since the firewall will block any incoming traffic by default, including yourself. I suggest working on UFW first on a system that you have direct access to. So how can UFW help us? Well, let's jump into the terminal, which I have open here, where I can show you how to enable it at least on Ubuntu and then how to manage some basic rules for your system. The first thing we'll do is type in UFW status and it says you need to be root in order to run this script. Well, that's because UFW requires super privileges. So you're going to have to use sudo in front and then type in UFW status. And now type in your password for your root user. And it says here inactive. If you've never activated it and enabled it, it will not be active. So this is what I was talking about at the beginning of the video. So now let's talk about how you can block ports that don't necessarily have to be visible to the rest of the world. And that's so nobody can simply scan your ports and try to maliciously connect to them without your permission. All right, since we checked the status, in order to actually activate the firewall, we can do this by doing sudo ufw enable and pressing enter. Now it will tell us that the firewall is active and enabled on system startup. So anytime you start up the system now, ufw will start with it, including it should be active now. So if I clear things out and we do sudo UFW status again, we'll notice now it says active. Congratulations, you've activated the firewall. And as you can tell, it's fairly easy to interact with UFW through the terminal. All UFW stands for is uncomplicated firewall because it's very easy to use through the terminal. Whenever you get to the point where you have many servers that you're managing, and you want to further secure those servers on Linux, you won't have the option to install the GUI based version of UFW, which all it does is help you interact with this script here. Instead, you'll have to work directly with a console or terminal like we're using right here in order to block those ports and manage your networks or ports using the UFW firewall settings because most server options are headless installs and don't have a GUI. So you'll be connecting from a remote computer or laptop to those servers that you manage. And you'll really want to understand how to use UFW through the command line. So since that's the case, let's talk more about the commands use cases for UFW. Before we go further, another important command, sudo UFW status, and then we'll type in verbose afterwards. This actually gives you information about the firewall. So currently it's active as we saw before. Logging is on a low setting. The default scheme for the firewall is to deny all incoming traffic, allow all outgoing traffic and disabled routed traffic and new profiles is set to skip currently. So whenever you need to figure out if something has changed in UFW, once you put a new setting in, you can officially see that by typing in this verbose. So let's add in our first rule. So for our first rule, since we have all outgoing traffic allowed, we can actually turn that off. This means someone from the server cannot access anything outside the server that you haven't specified. And to do this, we would do sudo UFW default deny outgoing. And now the default policy is to deny outgoing traffic. So if we check it out again, now the default policy here is incoming traffic is denied. Now, occasionally you'll have to actually restart the computer or server in order to actually have these settings take effect. I know I've had to do that in the past, so there could be some goofiness there. But now that we see we can make changes here, you guessed it, let's actually allow 
outgoing traffic now. And if we look again, now it's allowed on the outgoing side. And we can also just say allow the incoming traffic as well. This will help you if you have a server because it can allow you to open everything up to the public if it's something that's necessary. Typically, you wouldn't want to do this, but now you know how to turn off and on the default schemes for incoming and outgoing to whether or not you want to allow or deny traffic. Well, I'm going to actually set that all back to denying because I think this is an easier way to actually prevent people from going out or into the server. So now that I have both directions denied, I can actually add in some exceptions. So how do I do that? Well, one important thing that you'll need is if you do IP space A, you'll need a little bit of information about your current network and what you're connected to. And then I also have this adapter name right here. Mine is ENP0S3 and it has an IP address assigned. So actually I wanna keep this in mind. I don't necessarily care about the IP address at this point. I'm gonna clear things out and now let's see how I can apply a rule for a very specific IP address. For example, if I only wanted one IP to be able to actually get to my server, I can actually put it in the uncomplicated firewall by doing sudo ufw allow in on, and then we talked about that adapter a moment ago. Yours might be different. I'm going to paste that in ENP 0s3 for me, and then from some IP address. So I'm just going to do 88888. That's Google's DNS server, just as an example but you would replace this with some IP address that you personally know that you would want to give access to on your server. All right, says the rule has been added. So we know how to check UFW status and verbose. And look at that. Anywhere on ENP 0S3, the adapter, we are allowing traffic in from this IP address. Now you understand how to allow connections in, but how do you allow them to go out as well? Again, you're denying all outgoing traffic. So you might want to add a rule there like specific ports. So let me show you how to do that right after you smash that like button for me for learning about UFW and how to manage the firewall in a terminal or console. Let's actually do one more thing here, which is allowing all connections from a specific IP address. Right here, we only allow it on a specific adapter, but what if we didn't care about a specific adapter? We wanted to allow any adapter to connect with a specific IP address, we can do sudo ufw allow from, and then we just do 8.8.8.8 .8 or whatever IP address you're trying to allow. This is how you do it. If I do that, another rule has been added. And now if we go in and check that rule anywhere, allow in from this IP address. Awesome. Let's keep going here. And at any point, if you wanna delete one of these rules, you can do sudo ufw status. Easiest way is to number them. So here we have one, two. I'm gonna delete the first rule so I can now do sudo ufw delete and then just type the number in, so one. Yes, I do. And now if I rerun the verbose command, look at that, only this rule applies now. But how about allowing a specific port from a specific IP address? Well, we can do that too. sudo ufw allow from 8888 or whatever IP address. Whatever protocol you want to use, so for this example, I'm going to use TCP to any port 22. So this allows all traffic from this IP address and only TCP packets to a port 22 on your server. To any port 22, meaning any adapter on port 22 will work. So if I set that, let's check out the verbose command. And here you go, port 22, TCP protocol, allow in from a specific IP address. So this is a very helpful because a lot of us have SSH connections to a server. You wouldn't want someone else getting into that SSH connection if they had the wrong IP address. So this is a great way to prevent everybody from being able to connect via SSH and only allowing specific IP public IP addresses to actually connect to your server. It's one of the great things behind UFW, super easy to use in a headless console instance. And there are so many more ways of allowing traffic in or out. So really denying the outbound traffic doesn't really help us out too much. So for example, if I wanted to ping 
8.8.8.8 right now. I, I couldn't because I'm currently denying things. So I'm going to clear things out. And then if anything goes wrong, you can always disable UFW by doing sudo UFW disable. And then it says it's been stopped and disabled on system startup. Now, if I do sudo UFW status, it's inactive. And if I do verbose, it should still show me inactive and it does great. So no rules are being displayed. And in a moment, we'll check out where the rules actually lie on the server. That way you can edit things more efficiently, but I'm telling you how to disable things because if you can't do something like I wanted to ping this IP address, now I can, now I can. And that's because I disabled the firewall. Well, if you have problems, you can always disable the firewall and then get back to normal, just like you had it before. So it's something very nice to know. Other things you can do is block specific IP addresses to your server, allow only certain IP addresses on certain ports, only accept certain protocols, forward web traffic on secure HTTPS or HTTP, allow database connections and all sorts of other fun stuff. But my favorite thing to use it on is SSH connections. You wouldn't want anyone SSHing to your computer. And honestly, denying traffic out isn't helpful. So we're going to clear that out real quick. So sudo UFW enable, and then sudo UFW default, allow outgoing traffic, and then we'll check out sudo UFW status verbose. And now I'm allowing all outgoing traffic and denying all incoming traffic. I should be able to ping 8.8.8 .8 now. Great, I can. That means I can get to it. And 8.8.8 .8 .8 can currently get to anywhere or specifically port 22 TCP protocol base. I use UFW a lot with Ubuntu server. You can also install it on different systems if necessary, if you don't already have it. One last thing I wanna show you is where the rules exist. So let's check that out, clear it out. I'm gonna to go to forward slash Etsy forward slash UFW and then forward slash user. And you'll notice that there's a few files, a config file, a rules file and a rules file. So for IPv6 rules, they'll be in this one for IPv4 in this one. So that's the one we want to open up the, just the rules and we get a permission denied. That's because I forgot to put sudo in front. So I'll do that real quick. And now we can see all the different rules that are currently in UFW. Now there are a few background rules, which you don't see when you do the verbose command. And that's because some of this has to pertain to logging, as you can see and where things actually get logged to, and some of the rates at which the firewall logs information at. But here are the important ones to us is, this is what was generated in the rules for us. So let's say I wanted to add another IP address and I wanted to do it by just editing this file. Well, I can, I'm going to actually yank the next six lines and then I'm gonna paste them below. And then I'm just going to change the IP address to show you how this works and on this one as well. And now I'm going to save this file and exit. Finally, I'm going to read in what the current status is and look at that, it added entries, but it doesn't seem like it added them correctly. So that's my bad. Let me go back to the file and actually change uh, this up too. I forgot 4.4, this was a part of it. For some reason I thought it was a comment, but let me change that and now Let's see if things change correctly. They did. So always check and make sure whether you applied things correctly. Otherwise, that's probably why you have issues. If you need to disable the firewall so you can get through. And I'll also put a word of caution in that if you're messing with this on a headless server, be very careful of what you do because you might not be able to get into that server if you enable the firewall right away without putting rules in. That's going to be hard to access that server unless you have a surefire way of connecting that isn't affected by the firewall. So again, words of caution, play with this on something that you have direct access to first before you get comfortable doing it on something remotely, because it can give you issues if you don't know what you're doing. Hopefully this has expanded your knowledge a little bit about UFW and using the firewall on your particular computer production environment or server. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you in another video.